Welcome back to another 2.2 release. I can hear myself. Welcome back to another 2.2 release news. Hopefully no one today will interrupt me for now. And this time around, RobTop has given us some more inside look about 2.2. And I'll bring them to you one by one. What interesting stuff had RobTop has implemented onto 2.2 this time around? Let's find out. So starting off from the most recent news as of running this video, RobTop has announced a new set of blocks for 2.2. From the top, you can see a wide variety of colored blocks which would look great on an art or mod level the second set of blocks are pretty much an enlarged version of what we just saw and lastly we got this interesting design with a grassy top for your block design this gives off kind of a Super Mario Wii World 1 vibe to it or an Emerald Hill Zone vibe I don't know if you can tell but these block designs aren't bad to be put onto the new update now the next thing we're going to take a look at is something a bit unexpected but interesting Glow Rock on Twitter recommended Robtop to add in textures made for colorblind people. Robtop actually liked the suggestion and made some tweaks to the game sheet for portals and orbs. As you can see, these portals don't really look that bad for people that struggle with colors. I'm not really colorblind myself, so I don't have a ground to place my opinion on the matter, but most of those who are colorblind did agree on the idea, so I'm pretty sure we're getting to see this neat little feature as an option in the next update. Also, just want to point this out, and yes, when when flipped around, the symbols that relate to the portal do stay the same, so that's nice to note about. So the next thing that we got are some showcases for some effects that we've seen. As you can see, the video displays some of the newer blocks that are already showcased beforehand, and it seems like it's going to be a level for platformer mode. However, there is some interesting things to note about here. Firstly, there's a couple of new effects that we have not seen before, shader and lens circle. Lens circle definitely has to do with the transition of the circle fade out, which definitely gives me Super Mario World vibes. Since we know what Pixel 8 does, we can only assume that shader inverts the colors around the entire level, at least for now now. And lastly, not sure if this has to do with the update of the game, but we can hear a new track being played during the footage. It does seem to be produced by Rotom himself, as the music does resemble his style. Could this be a new soundtrack for 2.2 itself? Who knows? Also, more icons. Woo! This one is an elephant, most likely going to be a spider. It looks nice and all, but I'm not sure if it's going to work well with hitboxes and such. This other spider honestly just reminds me of Fawful from Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga. I know this isn't what it's inspired from, but it's pretty neat to look at. I would probably use this only for the sole reason that it looks like a hoodie, and I'm a guy who's obsessed with hoodies. This one is an icon that sort of looks like it doesn't want to be, and this one is is a spider pilot but a cube. Not sure if it's going to use our icons in the spider, most likely not considering it's hard to implement that, but nonetheless this would be really sick to see as a spider. A couple of months ago Bowser the boss had asked Rotsop if there could be a portal that inverse gravity, regardless of what gravity you were on. Well believe it or not, Rotsop did end up taking his suggestion as he implemented a new portal that can do just that. As you can see by the screenshot, it appears that the portal is green, which is a color mix between blue and yellow. The colors are both gravity portals that we use. So yeah, expect a completely new gravity portal to mark its appearance in 2.2, with loads of new opportunities to be made for gameplay ideas. Even though I'm expecting someone to brush under my room at any given moment, hey look, new shards! Yeah, as a matter of fact, there are five new shards that we haven't seen before. Well, on this channel at least. These shards are Earth, Metal, Blood, Light, and Soul shards. I'm not sure what unlockables are going to be connected with the shards, but hey, we can expect some more unlockables. Also, we got some new blocks to showcase. As you can see, these new blocks have these brown bricks, which are very reminiscent of those from Super Mario Bros. Of course, the brick won't always have to be brown and black. I'm pretty sure the colors of the brick can be customized to however the user wants via the Edit Objects button. Nonetheless, Unless this seems like a nice addition to the new update for Jump Dash. Up next, we have new icons coming over to 2.2. As shown, you can actually hop on many new ships from what it seems. 
The first ship is a pretty cool looking bird, nothing really important to note at. The second ship shows a skeleton with a skull in the front. Not sure which body is supposed to be, but it's a bit too detailed for my own taste. Who knows? Let me know if you guys enjoy it. The third ship shows a hand that would hold the player. Out of all the five ships, this seems to be the most creative ships, only because of how well it fits as a ship. Not to mention, it's not too huge so that it won't go over the hitbox. Really enjoy the ship overall. The fourth ship has this sword on top of the player. The sword's design looks very similar to the sword used as a wave. Not sure how many people would use this one, especially when a part of the sword's blade covers a portion of the icon and outside the hitbox. And last but not least, we have this final ship. The final ship, uh, um, I, I don't know what it is. It seems to be some sort of helicopter? or something along the lines of that? I'm not entirely sure, but yeah, it's a weird ship to have around to be honest. Anyways, the next thing I want to showcase are some more blocks that are going to be shown in 2.2. These blocks are pretty interesting as they not only have overlaying designs, but they also have their own design blocks to accompany with it. As demonstrated by the right side of the screenshot, you can actually see these blocks in a variety of ways. Also on the left side of the screenshot, you can see slopes that also have some designs as well, which is always neat to see in the next update. There are also some minor news that are coming in the 2.2 update. Why don't we have a look at them, shall we? In this screenshot, Brasto had asked Rotop about the zoom trigger, and Rotop responded with, Zoom code has changed a lot since the leaked stuff though, but it should work pretty much the same. So I expect their zoom trigger to be slightly better than what we have it nowadays. In this one, someone had asked Rotop to make GD merch, and he agreed to make some at some point. We've already known this beforehand, but this furthermore leans into the confirmation that yes, we are going to get some Jalchesh merch in the near future. The Chad Jalka had reported to Rotop about a crash bug that has to do with negative group IDs. Robtop took note of this and told him that the crash bug should be fixed in 2.2. I rarely use the GD editor and quite frankly when I've heard of this I had zero clue as to what he was referring to but if anyone else had a similar experience Y'all can let me know in the comments below. Next up on the 2.2 news is something quite peculiar. Radley had considered Robert to make orbs disappear after you click on them. Rotop answers the suggestion by saying that he has not done it before. Yet. So yes, we could be getting a checkbox option for something along the lines of that to where the orbs disappear if you use it once. I mean, you can just use an alpha trigger, but whatever. Anyway, some actual news about 2.3. Billy had asked Rotop about checkpoints that saves where you at in platform mode, even when you exit the level. To this, Rotop says maybe in 2.3, which means that we might have a chance at getting this feature in the far future update of Geometry Dash after 2.2. The inclusion of checkpoints in platform mode is a really neat idea. I mean, I don't really mind it being here, but then again, it does ruin the progression of Geometry Dash in the first place, so I don't really know if implementing that might be a good idea. Next up, X Creator Goal, which I don't know who he is at all, had asked Rotop to make a dick tech if there's a crash exploit that has to do with negative group IDs. Jaka had already mentioned this before, but Rotom also confirmed that it is fixed with 2.2. So yeah, literally the same thing that I said three minutes ago, but that's more confirmation about that. Also in the news, Mega Dustin had asked Robert Topala about adding odd numbers to Q saturation brightness values. Rotom had added to this by confirming that you can set keyboard numbers to those values on your own. I don't know how huge this is to Geontrash creators, I'm not really that much into creating levels, so this is nothing huge for me, but I guess for people who are into creating, this might be something worth checking out. Speaking of something worth checking out, Robton announced that in 2.2, the unlisted friends only system is safe to use. Like, I know what he's trying to say, unless the levels can only be played when you added them as a friend, but what I don't get is that it's safe to use. I'm pretty sure he meant that unlisted levels are not going to be as broken as we have now, but who knows. Up next we got is some news for 2.3. HJ Fawn had asked Robert Tapala about a system to where you can save levels as files and can be used to share levels outside Geometry Dash. He explained that this can be done so that levels can be more difficult to be leaked since they are outside of the GD servers. Rata responded to this by saying that in 2.3, external file saving for levels are planned, which I'm pretty sure is just confirming to what HJ Fawn had in mind. This is a pretty cool idea to have for Geometry Dash since sharing levels
levels can be pretty difficult for creators and mega collab hosts. I do have to wonder how Rob is going to implement that into GD, but nevertheless, still glad this is brought onto 2.3. Also, you know how when you edit an object, you only have two colors to choose from the based on the details of the block? Well, apparently we're getting a third color added on top of that. That's right, folks. According to Rob Tub, he answered Impax's question by saying that you can actually choose glow as a third color in 2.2. So soon enough, and if my speculations are correct, we might be getting our hands on a third tab dedicated to glow colors. I'm assuming what Rob meant by glow is the small little glow checkbox that you see here. So yeah, if we can change the colors of the glow in Geometry Dash, instead of doing it manually, we can simply just have the glow turned on and change the glow colors that way, which is not only going to make levels much simpler, but it can also be used for optimization, which is amazing. And last but not least, we got this interesting bit from Robert Apala. Luca TV had asked Robtub about an option for mood triggers that it follows the y-axis of the screen. Robtub had answered this question by telling Luca that you can either choose to lock onto the player or onto the camera. Honestly, this is a really neat addition to mood triggers. I'm not sure how this answers his question, but still, you can now have things to move to either the player or the camera itself. Hey, what are you doing my video? Also, how did you find where I live? Wait a minute. Why am I still here? Well, whatever. You think you are the better 2.2 news channel, but I'll have you know that mine is higher quality. Therefore, better. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah! <sighs> You know, maybe he's right. I, I suppose nowadays it's quantity over quality. I mean, 40,000 subscribers? That's a lot in comparison to me. I mean, th there's no way that I can keep up at this rate. Might as well give up and be on his side. Wait, how can you do that? Oh. I-I suppose not.